What's good YouTube and welcome to the house. Konami has updated a ton of set descriptions and I'm not sponsored by Konami and even if I were, I would be giving it to you guys straight and how I feel. Hello, my roommate. He's right across over there from me. He, you know, does remote duels for you. You could slip a little something into his stuff and send it towards me in order to like, you know, do something with the channel. I know you listen and, but I digress. With this product, all I see is 2020 Megatons number two, two, two when I, I read the set description it actually makes me kind of angry because we see dark magician and blue eyes once again and I'm not tired of nostalgia but hearing for the next five months dark magician players are gonna go maybe my deck can become meta again and then you have the blue eyes players beating their chest and going in on each other on their bills even harsher and that toxicity spilling over and oh boy we can stand up the tablet of lost memories this time instead of having it like spread throughout the side of a 10 yeah this just seems really repetitive and I, the word that's missing the word that's really on my mind is promos what the heck happened the 2019 megatons was one of the most successful products of all time and now we've had promos ripped from March reprint sets from Mega Tins, and it's just an unhealthy style for the tins because look, Dragoon may be $80 now, and you may see that as some kind of success, Konami, but it sat on shelves under MSRP waiting for that card to do anything in our metagame. Stores had to clearance that in the meantime. They had to sell it in order to keep overhead and pay employees. So the people sitting on tins realistically are the backpack vendors or people who order a ton and they sold some and they sat on the rest like the gold sark megatons and then they ended up making bank if they did get like a mother hen they didn't have the overhead they were just storing it in the back room so when i look at this overall i really hope you look at the 2019 megatons you reconsider you crafted some of the best promos that were just ten dollars and players pockets like Nibiru, Dark Ruler, no more that they want three of naturally at a low cost instead of $80 Dragoons being pushed into a, I, I, it's not healthy. It's not good. Now, what is awesome is the Cyber Strike Structure Deck. Glad to see it did not get the Dragoonity treatment and get pieced out into another product. All these seem to be like end of August, September, so we're going to have a clump of things that you need to save up all at once if you were buying in. And it looks like a shout out towards Yugi Nono. Fans have long asked for a way to search out this card from the deck, Power Bomb. And this Structure Deck has created the perfect opportunity to provide one. I think that this will be really awesome and we do already see market movement going crazy if you type in the tcg player cyber dragon you're seeing really crazy results and if you're searching penny stonks or any kind of high-end stuff like this right now use that tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying but going through some of the notable cyber and dragon ultimate rare has been bought out to crazy proportions lowest listed is 3000 it's been bought out for some time but this bubbling disappearing of even some of the worst condition ones is wild cyber and dragon from crv first edition oddly feels kind of cheap to me around the $50 mark like I actually think for a first edition truly near mint like you might not even have it gradable but throwing back to Stein format and others I get that oh higher rarities the secret rare looks nice of this first said CRV that could age pretty well Cyber Dragon Infinity I told you guys this was a good investment around the $6 mark even if it's from Pepe format and the love of Cyber Dragons crossing over it floats back in the formats finds its way into top cuts like orcas you have $20 copies at this point that's pretty impressive coming from six dollars and cyber dragon nova the only holographic version the other two are common and then there's a oversized jumbo card of it unlimiteds are seven dollars above market price and first editions are in about the same range people love playing highest rarity with this deck and i'm sure that structure deck announcement has more eyes on it than ever and we're about to see some crazy things whatever a structure releases even if it's as non-impactful as the ice barrier structure deck which good point on sponsor I have sponsors that were like, yo, these Ice Barrier Structure Decks aren't moving, and I'm like, I'm gonna tell people not to buy them still. I always put my audience's best interest at heart. So whenever Structure Decks drop, though, we have this impact of cards that almost nobody can see rising in price. It's this free-for-all gamble, but Cyber Dragons are one of the biggest names. That's why you're seeing so much movement early on predictable ones. Whenever they drop, something usually gets missed or something we don't see happening happens, and these odd-off cards 
cards become a ton of money or missed opportunity reprints become a lot of money lightning overdrive set description has updated and the most important phrase here besides war rocks getting updated you are a bolder investor than i if you're going in on war rocks i can't make that pun with a straight face i can't do it but i would personally stay away you are going with just intuition and gut that battle-based instinct if you're investing in war rocks right now just because the set description does confirm new ones we get the Viner of heralds along with drytron mu beta fafnir so huge updates for the drytron deck the Viner of herald is an amazing card it is a tuner that also if it's normal or special summon you send a fairy monster from your deck or extra deck to graveyard and if you do increase the level of this card by that monster so oh you send herald that's pretty awesome you get a free search you have a tuner on board and i'm being told by a lot of people you want to make fa don dragster which really seems to be a penny stonk i would have thought this in this way anyways a super rare easily could be three dollars to five dollars in super, certain metas and it only has two printings one being from flames of destruction a set worth a lot of money in its own right and market price for the super rare is barely above the rare with plenty of sellers around that one dollar mark so i think this is actually kind of a good hold to get into anyways as a penny stonk i don't think it's bad at all and dawn of majesty has its release date also you'll notice here in august mid august so like i said a ton of product slamming up together within that august late august september area and then you do have this dropping in june a good line of product setting up overall i do wonder how core sets will proceed after the last couple of flop people hoping for the next rise of the duels to happen but that was also shorted core sets are in a weird place right now aren't they now for a little bit of a sellout amanda la palm art has the alistair the invoker mini bundle up this will only be up for a limited time this ends on april 4th 12 a.m pacific so you do want to go ahead and get yours if you want a normal summon alistair for the 5,000th time but search invocation and style field centers really cool sleeves a chibi pin that looks amazing and the playmat and you can use code waxgood5 for five percent off and to support the channel directly while getting some of amanda's awesome art lava golems up in price and seeing some more play in this meta people really tried to push in the stream like oh i got 20 of these by the way it's up in price oh gee i wonder why it's up in price so lava golem retro pack 2 getting bought out to ridiculous proportions where it's almost worth what a first edition secret rare was last night like the lowest was around six nine nice we'll see where it's at right now for a uh and you see tons of heavy plays down here it's a it's a really iconic card when it comes down to it but it also has a lot of nice versions yeah 70 dollars and then a hundred dollars this got bought out not too long ago either it got attention in a lot of metagames alongside sphere mode still eats your normal summon you have dual terminal you have dr3 ultra original first edition like like, like not original first edition my bad the promo uh, ultra as well and then original first edition secret so you have a ton of different nice versions around here that you could really go for and like the dual terminal looks amazing I guess that detracts from sales rates on other ones but I really do respect this card and its field clear ability and it also does come back into metagames somebody asked me an interesting question on stream i'm in the market for a needleworm tp3 should i be buying now and personally i don't see a lot of collector cards going down in price so more so my advice to somebody in the market for a card like this that's gone to ridiculous proportions for loose copies try to do a deal on facebook groups with reputable vendors who would want to avoid 13 percent fees on tcg player even maybe go down a little bit more giving you the hookup because that huge chunk of fees as the dollars get up here really matters so you might be able to like you know find this for 500 ish in facebook groups where it's non-existent or really wait for a deal while prices are increasing going crazy on a lot of vintage old school stuff and they may not come down this is a ridiculous price for this card but it could get more ridiculous i get your fear and your want for a collection try to hunt down a deal rather than just 
paying that face value straight up on here. Celestial Lightsworn Angel Ultimate Rare got bought out ridiculously. Somebody asked if they should be listing yours. Absolutely. 335. Try to listen to 200 and see if it auto sells. This is not Judgment Dragon. This is not integral to the deck. It's played in like some of the oldest versions of the deck then disappears from time. I love this card. It has a Lost Art promo, you know, having the Halo and stuff. This, this is a bit ridiculous for an Ultimate Rare even if it's tied to one of the best archetypes of all time. Spirit Charmer Structure Decks also came up on the stream. Somebody asked me if they should be buying it. My only reason that I would be buying this sealed is if you need the Dark Ruler and the Moors out of it, and then everything else comes bonus with a ton of amazing cards alongside it. If you don't need the Dark Ruler and the Moors, buy the singles. Piece up these awesome collectible arts, RNG tokens. I really respect that they put random number generation in terms of like, oh, you have to pull these cards in a structure deck. I respect they tried that and then go for the pieces that you want out of it. If you don't need Dark Ruler no more, just kind of budget and see what's right for you. But yeah, it has an amazing single in here that didn't get pulled out like evenly matched. <laughs> uh, Danger Suchinoko, Danger Bigfoot, all these dangers are up in price. I featured that Suchinoko was getting bought out and then there was a lot of low quantities. Prices have since popped up on the Danger engine, even though it's not really seeing the most amount of play overall. I really respect the level 8 engine as well as the, you know, you have Suchinoko, Jackalope, Nessie, still restricted the one on the FNL list. This engine bops. It's really cool and I understand why people want to have access to it. Jack Jackalope, oddly, one of the cheapest cards just because of its third printing, but I still think the Secret Rear is maybe a really nice hold. Phantasmal Lord Ultimate Bishbalkin that got a buyout again the other day, already cooling back in price the other day. A Bish, oh, FTK. People really are putting faith. Oh, it's just a couple more cards. It's really consistent. People fighting back in my comment section on the buyout as if maybe they're a part of it. Jokes aside, I just don't necessarily respect it. Maybe. Maybe I should fear it more. Feels a bit like how overhyped the Stein FDK was back in the day where every Yugi tuber's covering and I literally just went, you know what? This isn't that big of a deal. I'm usually one of the first people to cover something like that. So I don't know. Maybe I am underselling it, but uh, it keeps crashing back down in price pretty fast after it gets bought out. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, I've been informed that is really way more in the metagame than I was giving it credit for. And somebody asked about the secret rares. Do you think they could go up? Well, here's the realistic answer. The lowest secret rares are around, what, 70-ish dollars still even today. And if this were to spike up, where do you see it landing? Last time it was around $90. Do you think there will be sales rates above $90? Now, after you list it at $90 and you're going to be putting a bubble mailer tracking, you're going to have, you know, all sorts of stuff on it and fees. Let's, let's just take out the TCG player fees, right? Let's uh, take out that nice 13 fat percent. Ah, you're really close to that 70. Oh, uh, a bubble mailer and shipped tracking and top loader and you're doing all that for a speculation on five dollars that's a terrible percent of profit versus your margin and if you're looking to get them to resell now if you do see them being higher now we're talking like 120 but i personally don't really see it getting sales rates around there with the ultimate rare looming above it i just don't think you're buying cost versus potential profits that good but you never know with how the market is Fog Blades are up in price, uh, Boots is very low on quantity, up in price, Secret Rare, and you have Torn Scale up from when I last looked, but a little under market price with the uh, Starlight going up. I wanted to call it Prismatic. I keep catching myself because OCG calls it Prismatic. We call it Starlight. Gosh freaking dang it because Prismatic Secret Rare is in the Megatons. Uh, I'm actually myself on market watch. I'm, I'm salty today. But yeah, this engine seems to be getting a little bit more and more notice and every single version of Fogblade is up there in price. I could see this getting another reprint at some point in time, especially thanks to Phantom Baby Rage, maybe in Battles of Legend or something. So I would be careful of this, although... You know, it was a Battles of Re Legend reprint before. We've seen multi-reprints from Battles of Legend circulating now. I would be a little bit careful holding on to this card if you're doing it for extras, hoping that the engine pops off. But if it's your own personal deck, 
yeah, you're kind of stuck playing them, aren't you? That being said, thanks for tuning in to today's Market Watch. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the conversations. Check out Amanda's Invoked Mat. Remember, this does end April 4th and won't be available again. And I really think these sets upcoming... Some of them could use some work. Some of them are awesome to see come to fruition. Others, really interesting choices, aren't they? War Rock Unga Bunga Mommies.